All right, holding this up, iPad's weird. Anyway, today we're here today. We're here today looking at a, our pet safe invisible fence. We're gonna go over unpackaging and installation and we're gonna start trying to train some dogs. So let's have a look. All right, here we go. Pet safe invisible fence. Let's go ahead and get this opened. There ought to be enough just to pull it apart. Sorry, right, one hand in here. We don't have a oh, one that helps us in our endeavors. All right, let's see what we got. All right, box in a box. So here we go. Let's pull it out. Here we are. Our pet safe wireless pet containment system. Um, you'll notice went ahead and got a couple extra batteries. They sell some rechargeable ones. These are not the rechargeable ones. Why would they make any of them un not rechargeable? I really don't know, but they don't. But these, they charge charge about seven bucks a piece. Say they last a few months. We'll, we'll see. I'm not, I'm not really buying it. After unboxing, here's what we have. We have our collar, power supply, a bag full of what appears to be bottle rockets, but is supposed to be flags. Um, ye old stop, please don't return me. And... Our manual RTFM I'm gonna do it I've got one thing it also comes with this which um, this is like a tester so you can go test the range after we install it these are some I believe um, for pets who have like longer thicker fur they will have little electrodes that reach into the pet it's fur further um, and of course it kind of look like they're just built off regular electrical standoffs so now we're gonna go and try to find a spot to place the system it needs to be inside where it's not supposed to go below freezing not supposed to be in the weather and here's another problem or a problem that I'm gonna have it's that this system should only be placed up to three feet off the ground now if you'll notice or if you've noticed in any of my other videos I have a house that's on stilts. We flood quite often here. And that being the case, I'm not going to be able to get it inside three feet off the ground. We're gonna be about six feet off the ground. So that being the case, we'll just see how it works. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on the floor level and we're gonna go find a spot in my office. Some things I noticed directly, which I figured this was is going to be a transmitter. I, I assumed it was going to run off DC. It makes sense. It looks like here, power supply is a converter. I guess they didn't build that into the box because, I mean, these are parts that are going to, you know, known to be go bad every four, five, maybe up two years. So you can easily replace that. I haven't looked at the voltage we've run at yet. And I did read right here, they put this little nice yellow gotcha on the collar this is something that I had not even looked about doing my research yet um, but it basically says don't leave this on your dog for more than 12 hours a day which means you're gonna have to take this on your dog put it back off or take it off your dog put it on your dog it, it makes it a little more of a pain in the ass than just something you can leave on your dog and not have to worry about it so I would say that that is a major negative point for this product but we'll just see how it works so here is a couple of things that we're going to look at just give you an idea so your containment area is going to be a circle um, around wherever you place the transmitter um, it's gonna you know transmit for a radius in all directions so that's gonna be a problem for me a little bit because my yard is kind of slender yet long. So we're gonna to have to find a way to where we can contain them inside of these bounds and at the same time, uh, give them maximum range so they can still run out on the pier and go out there. We love to have the dogs on the pier, so. A couple of other things are going to let you know, and this is kind of maybe, uh, my fingernails, y'all, just post the comments about it, maybe it'll hype us. Um, you want to keep your transmitter away from metal objects. I will tell you that I know that, you know, any metal objects around wireless transmission devices are going to cause problems. 
Um, they're saying make sure that we have uh, enough ventilation, you know, around around the transmitter, which that makes sense as well. Make sure it's in a dry area. And the next thing you're going to do is prepare the collar, which that's another thing that I forgot is they try to add on this handy dandy little check your, uh, what we're going to call it a multi-tool device. You have little wrenches for removing and changing these electrodes. Um, and it's got a little wrench on here somewhere to take the battery in and out. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and prepare the collar. And just out of curiosity here, I'm wondering if they have, they should have by regulation on here what this voltage is. But okay, nine, yeah, 19 volts at 1.26 amps. So it's really not going to draw that much power. So let's go from there. This is kind of how the tool will work here for your electricals points of contact these are the ones made for they say if your dog has longer thicker hair I'm gonna go ahead and try these for my dogs I consider my dogs to be short haired dogs but we'll just see how they work um, one interesting thing I did notice here is they're telling you to tighten the contact points and um, check it check the tightness weekly I'm um, just throwing this out there why not put a lock washer on it like it just seems like a basic duh to me, but maybe their engineers have a reason. I would put a lock washer on it. In fact, I think I will. So here we go. I've already got, you know, pulled out my handy dandy little screw kit. Pull the lock washer out, put it on there. I'm sure you all know what a lock washer is, but if not, here's an example. Now, it probably would be a good idea to put a actual washer under the lock washer. The way these come apart is they have these kind of plasticky feeling things. Or probably, yeah, I probably need to redo that and go ahead and put a real washer on under the lock washer, and then the, the lock washer should hold us in place. All right, so we got a washer installed with lock washer. Um, sorry, that's not coming into focus too well. Let's just see. Whoa, whoa. Let's do that. There we go. And uh, the next step they say is to turn the battery over here um, they use their handy dandy little tool for that and their reasoning uh, is it also will give better protection for water safety which if you notice our dogs swim a lot so I'm really kind of curious as to how this is going to hold up in the water and I will report back on that I'll also check in a week and see if these have come tightened or loosened it probably would be good to do a control test by getting one for another dog and not adding the washer and lock washer and see how it holds up as well so let's go ahead and finish this prep so now it's on to setting the correction level they have this little plastic over this button on the unit use the little handy dandy tool they sent you unscrew that off and you press this button and that sets correction level you're going to press it uh press it you notice a series of light flashes one two i think that that means that we're at a correction level of two i'm not exactly sure how far it goes up to this point and I think we're going to start, I'm probably going to start my dogs on a two. Um, I don't think that's going to be too bad for them. But if they don't seem to mind it, which um, knowing my dogs, they probably won't, then we'll crank that up a little bit more. So here we are. I just walked outside the door. What are we, 10 feet from the thing? It, it was immediately going off when, <laughs> right, when I was sitting next to it at the lowest level so let's go crank it up and see if that helps some um, we're not trying to contain the dog within um, what 20 square feet all right back outside we have went ahead and cranked the sucker up i figured if it's going to go off that easy when we're that close let's hit max and see what happens ah uh, this is our first one this is a little cow dog he's actually never been on a leash in his life now when i was training his mama not his mama, but who we call his mama as to the boundaries. This is what I did with her. I walked her around with a leash and said, hey, we can go here and we can. And it worked until some people we knew drove across the street. And she was like, oh, I know them. It's cool. So, let's go, cow. We're going to be safe. Got a little white flags up. It's kind of stupid. 
and maybe they come back to normal soon, but it's kind of stupid that they roll them up because you're not getting as much surface area visual. See the little things in the ground? Those, those are his flags. It's just, they shouldn't roll them up. They should ship them unrolled. Let's go try to learn a boundary. Come on, let's go. I don't think he likes the, I don't think he likes all the extra on the collar. Let's see. Yeah, we do need to put up boundary flags. You're right. A visual indicator for you. See if you can do it from verbal command. You're pretty good at coming when I tell him. All right, I'm gonna walk in front of you. Yeah, that's a very cute stick. You ready to get shocked? Come on, are you gonna pee on the tire? You can pee on the tire. You're about to leave. Hey, hey, cat dog. Cat dog. Cat dog. You should be getting shocked right now. Come back. Come back. Let's go. You went too far. Hey. Let's go. Come back. Get back. Get. Oh, yeah. He didn't like that. We got to learn the boundaries. Daddy's going to go set up some boundary flags. You sure ran home though, didn't you? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah, we didn't like that at all. Hey, right, so our additional collars have come in. This is what they've sent us. So we're currently in for one wireless fence and three additional, well, they came, we bought a collar additionally and three additional. So one wireless fence and four collars. So far our cost is a little over $700 for this. And we have one dog that has been wearing this for a couple of weeks now. He is actually scared to go outside. Um, started him off on a three, level three, and we bumped him down to a two. We're going to go ahead and get the other dogs acclimated, but first we got to set up these collars. Um, why it took so long for them to get in is because we ordered on January 8th, and this did not come in until two days ago. So, I guess it took a little while to get here, but we're going to give it a try, and hopefully we'll be keeping these dogs in the yard. We can get this. See if I can get you guys a good angle. I'm going to try to hold these sort of down as to where the dogs would be walking. And we go out. We're going. There's our flags. About to cross the flag line. Right here, you hear it beep? Hard beeping. Let's run back. Dog runs back. Still beeping. Still beeping. Flags are there. Still beeping. Still beeping. And still beeping. Right here, where it stops. You see the flags way back there, right behind the golf cart. Okay, this time I wanted to see when the shocking starts in relation to the beeping and when it stops, uh, as well as how often the shock happens. So let's go ahead and try to find that out. What I kind of found is once it goes to beeping fast, they're gonna get shocked. And once it's beeping slow, it's gonna stop. The shock rate seems about one per second. So what is that, a 60 hertz? Uh, now that 60 hertz would be 60 times per second. Would that be one hertz? So let's, in the beeping, I also noticed, like as we just saw, it doesn't stop until they're probably 20 yards back into the safety zone. Well, let's go ahead and go out there and simulate the dogs being shocked, see how often they get shocked, and see how far they must run into the safety zone before that stops. Going out towards the edge of the safety zone. Now this thing has a little light in it. And you're just connecting the two electrodes and it basically is powering a LED. So we're back on the flags again. See the flag? It should start beeping soon. One beep. Fast beep. Boom. Dog's getting hit. I guess it's more than one per second. We're turning around. We're scared. We're running back. Okay, we've stopped. All right. Back out. Warning beep, warning beep, warning beep. Oh, ow, 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 turn around, run, run, run. That is testing with one collar. Now what I want to do is use the other collar and see if we're getting consistency. Got it. 
Should be outside of safety zone soon. Beeping. Okay, well that was odd. So on the second collar I tried, I didn't get the light. I tried to make sure that I had proper contact, but maybe it's only on the beeping setting. Maybe one came with the setting of, you know, a uh, shock and another one came with a setting of, you know, beep. Because they do have it so that you can set it in a mode so that your dog is going to get an audible warning. So potentially that's what happened. Let's go ahead and check these settings. I just checked the two collars that we were testing and one of them came pre-programmed at beep only. The other one came programmed at a level four zap, which I find it odd that there wasn't a consistency in how they, you know, came pre-programmed. So this one actually came in beep only mode. It went into two mode, um, or to the lowest level of zap mode, one, one press, and we had to go ahead and cycle back through. So that should be one. We're in beep mode. Boom. One, two. All right, I believe level two is the lowest level of zap. Let's go test it out. So here we have this. It's been one day, um, been one day since we've you know, had the collar on. And now a little man is scared to get off the porch. All right, so um, at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and break this into a two-part video. Uh, that way you can kind of see part one, the unboxing, initial results, and then we'll go ahead into a part two of, you know, after weeks of having this out, thoughts from that, and we'll kind of like make our decision as to how we really feel uh, about our purchase at, at that point. So I appreciate you guys watching. Um, if you're interested, go ahead and check out part two. Uh, you know, once again, T fits out. Smash the like. Smash the like. Smash that like. Smash the like.